We went away for a week. We drove all the way through Wyoming and saw some of the places that we used to live. We drove through the desert and up into the mountains. And although the cool mountain air felt cold and fresh and good, it was even better returning back to home. You see, it is so good for the homemaker to leave the home sometimes, to take a break and get away from the mundane. And it makes coming home all the sweeter. I'm so excited to get back into my routine to do the things that I'm used to doing and I look at it with a brighter, fresh, new perspective. So today I want you to join me for a little bit of homemaking motivation as I get back into my routine here on our cozy little 100-year-old farmhouse in Missouri. Before we left, I saved some fresh cow's milk and a loaf of sourdough bread in the freezer so that we would have something to thaw out when we got back, and I'm so glad that I did. Because after our 16-hour drive home from Wyoming, I really do not want to get back in the car and go to the grocery store. So we are going to use what we have as long as we possibly can and postpone going to the grocery store. This morning, we're just having some oatmeal with raisins. My family loves oatmeal with evaporated milk and brown sugar and cinnamon. And since the milk is still frozen, it just is perfect. So I always try to keep a little bit of evaporated milk on hand in the food storage, just for instances like this. So I've been reflecting on the pantry and the importance of having a well-stocked pantry. And I've mentioned this in the past, but now that I'm recording the voiceover for this video, it's been a few days and we still haven't gone to the grocery store and we've been just fine. And that makes me feel so grateful, so grateful for the foods that we have, so grateful for the little preparations that were done in the past so that we don't have to worry later. There's so much to do when you get home from a big trip, including loads and loads of washing laundry, really just picking up where you left off. And we were sick for a couple weeks before we left on our trip. And so there is plenty to do in the house and in the garden. And Myra was so happy to go see her chickens that she loves so much and pick a few eggs that our one laying hen is laying. These other chicks we got just this spring, they've grown so much in one week. And we are looking forward to receiving eggs from them Later on, the end of summer, maybe beginning of fall. It's always hard to leave your garden, whether it's the middle of summer, the beginning or the end. I always say that a good gardener is in her garden every day, watching, seeing what's happening. So I was a little scared to see what, the, what condition the garden would be when we got back. And thanks to some neighbors who did tend some of these things, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. We had a lot, a lot of lettuce and these spicy mustard greens that we're picking right here. And we also came back to some enormous radishes. This is a diacon white radish and it's very mild, but they grew so big when we were gone. And so did these red radishes as well, which were much spicier than the white diacon radishes. To be exact, these are French breakfast radishes and they don't usually get this fat and bulgy, but we harvested as many as we could. And of course we fed the rest of the scraps and greens to the chickens and they 
loved those. Although I hadn't really planned on it, the rest of the day really went to trying to figure out how to preserve and use these spicy mustard greens and all the radishes and lettuce that we harvested from the garden this morning. Now, these spicy mustard greens are so nutrient rich. They have a delicious spice flavor when they're eaten raw, but you can also cook them like a collard green. And so I'm going to prepare some of these spicy mustard greens in a pasta dish for lunch today. And I just started out by sauteing a few slices of bacon, which I had in the freezer, one onion, a few cloves of garlic, And then I added these spicy mustard greens and let that all saute with some olive oil for about five to 10 minutes. Then I added a can of tomatoes that already had some basil and some Italian herbs in it already. So you could just do a plain can of diced tomatoes with a few Italian herbs, mostly basil and garlic in this case. And I let that simmer for a couple more minutes. I added a little bit of balsamic vinegar and then tossed it with whole wheat spaghetti pasta. And of course we served this with a fresh lettuce and radish salad because we've got plenty of that. But there's something about the simplicity of using what you have in your garden that makes me feel so rich. <laughs> Just so full, so grateful, and so happy. So chances are if you planted a garden and you planted radishes, you probably have some of those as well. They are one of the fastest germinating and growing things that you can put in your garden. And so I wanted to give you guys a couple of ideas for what to do with those radishes. So first I'm just washing up some of these diacon white radishes and French breakfast radishes. So I didn't put any thought into choosing my seeds this year. I just ordered a farmer's pack from survivalgardenseeds.com and I'm really happy so far with the selection and the things that um, we had in that packet. Both of these radishes are actually on the mild side of for radishes in general. And I'll put down a link to that website down below so you can order some seeds from there. Really happy with them so far. If you soak your radishes in some cold water for a little bit and then take them out of the water and put them in a fresh Ziploc bag and go straight into the fridge, they'll stay nice and crisp and won't get soft. I'm gonna start out by making some refrigerator pickled radishes. I'm gonna do a couple different flavors, but I love having these quick pickled vegetables in the fridge. Our family is nuts about all things pickled. So I'm gonna make two large jars of pickled radishes. And so I have here on the pot, two cups of water and two cups of regular distilled white vinegar. And so it's a one to one ratio. And I'm just digging around in my spice cabinet to see what I can add in here. And I'm just adding about four tablespoons of raw cane sugar to this mixture of vinegar and water. And I'm just gonna leave it here on the stove until that sugar dissolves, which takes a little bit longer with this really coarse raw cane sugar. And I absolutely love pickled purple onions. Try to say that, pickled purple onions. <laughs> and I'm also gonna add some garlic cloves in here as well, just a few per jar. So some garlic and some onions delicious. Mm -hmm. 
I can't believe I didn't have any dill on hand, so I'm using this Trader Joe's dill pickle blend, which actually is really delicious, and I've been putting on a lot of potato salad lately, but one of these jars of pickled radishes, I'm going to just put a ton of this dill pickle seasoning mix, but really what's in there is just dried onion and dill pickle and some garlic powder, so you could really replicate that yourself. And the other spice mix I did was a bit of twist on an Asian spice blend. So there's some anise star in here, a little bit of clove, some mustard seeds as well. Maybe add some peppercorns and I did add a dash of salt to each of these jars and it really pulled, to me, it seemed very Vietnamese flavor and it was delicious as well. But I have to say, the dill pickle was definitely the favorite in our home. So I'm gonna be making a lot more dill pickled radishes. This property was a jungle when we got home. So Jared got right to work mowing the lawns and trimming all the things. There's so much to do here with the garden and the lawns that we are hardly keeping up with it. I still had this big bucket of greens and radishes, so I decided to just put them out in this lovely rain that came down. And that helped keep all the greens and radishes nice and crisp. And that water just woke these spicy mustard greens right up. So I set off to make dinner and figure out how I can use all this wonderful produce. So I pulled out a pork loin from the freezer. I'm just dicing up some Yukon gold potatoes and putting these in here and really just making this up as I go. I also chopped up a couple of large daikon radishes and layered those amongst the potatoes as well. Whenever I'm faced with a new ingredient that I want to use, I usually do a little bit of research online. I look at different recipes and compare and contrast and see what people are using them for. So the Japanese do use these daikon radishes in a lot of cooked recipes and they turn out nice and tender and mild, um, similar to a potato or a beet. And so I decided to put this all here in a bake and it turned out really lovely. And I decided to mix together a Dijon mustard or a honey Dijon mustard um, marinade to go over this dish and it, it complemented it perfectly. So for the sauce, I used two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of grainy Dijon mustard. I am sprinkling a little bit of this 21 seasonings that I also have from Trader Joe's. You can tell I am a big fan of Trader Joe's spices, but you could also just do some salt and pepper, um, add you know, a little bit of seasoning salt and then I also added some, for the rest of the sauce, I added a couple tablespoons of soy sauce, about two to three tablespoons of olive oil, some diced garlic, and I did add some onions to this as well. And I just poured it all over the vegetables and the meat. And just to make sure it was saucy enough, I just added a splash of soy sauce and a splash of olive oil and a little bit more seasoning as well. So I topped this off with some foil and put it in the oven at 375 degrees and baked it for 45 minutes and checked my loin to make sure it wasn't overcooked and check the tenderness of my vegetables. I ended up taking the foil off and cooking it for 15 minutes more at 400 because it just was a little bit crunchy, the loin was a little bit underdone, so 
just really keep an eye on that and make sure you get your meat nice and cooked, but also still juicy and tender. Let that sit for a few minutes and then dive in. I put some of this golden tomato chutney on top of it, which added some tart and sweetness to the dish. And it was a beautiful marriage. And I will put a video down below where I made that last summer. At the end of this busy day, I just wanted to show you how I am feeding my sourdough starter. It's been in the fridge for about a week and a half, and this is what it looks like. I'm just draining that liquid right off the top because that's where a lot of that sourness comes from. So I'm pouring that off the top. I'm going to use the discard to make some sourdough pancakes for the following day. And I just use a half, one and a half cup of milk, a half a cup of sourdough discard and a cup and a half of freshly ground whole wheat and then I put it in the fridge to ferment for the rest of the night or until I'm ready to use it. I have noticed that when my sourdough has been in the fridge sleeping for over a week that it does take a couple feedings maybe more to really waken it up. So I'm really considering this my first feeding and I'm going to just add some flour here. It's equal parts flour and equal parts water. And I really ended up adding a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of water and just mixed it until it was like a really thick cake batter consistency. The following morning was a little bit exciting because we heard little kittens meowing on the front porch. One of our farm cats had her kittens underneath the house under a, a crawl space that was really hard to get to. So we've just been waiting for these little cute kittens to be ready to come out. And today was the day. Myra was such a cute little mommy. She made sure that the dogs didn't torment the little kittens. And so we counted five little kittens. We put them in this little basket, took some pictures of them, played with them for a little bit. And we are finding homes for these little kittens. Aren't they cute? The work of a homemaker is never complete. There is no finish line. There's definitely no gold medals. There's no boss telling you job well done. And there's definitely no completion. So how does a homemaker feel complete? How do they feel accomplished? It's important to remember that it's not about the tasks. It's not about what you accomplish every day. It's not about what you were able to cross off the list that day. It's much deeper than that. And as a homemaker, you really need to ground yourself and make sure that you are planted in rich nutrient soil, so to speak. Knowing that the purpose of what you're doing is much deeper. That it's really for the people who live in this home. It's for the joy and the love that you provide in this home for these people. And so my motivation for homemaking and when I'm swimming in a pile of laundry, which I do not recommend doing laundry like this. This is definitely <laughs> piled up over time. I usually like to do my laundry throughout the course of the week instead of saving it all at once so you're just swimming in a pool of laundry but you must sink your feet into something deeper finding the meaning behind all, all of these things that you're doing so that when the piles of laundry when the two weeks of the flu come you're not washed away in the storm of homemaking and mundane tasks and if you've done these things, if you can create a home that you love, a home that is full of peace, then when you go away on vacation or on a trip and you come back and you're so happy to be back, that's your sign. That's a really good sign. 
that you're doing something right. So, as your homemaking guru, <laughs> the one cheering you on as you're restoring home, family, and spirit, I invite you to press that subscribe button if you haven't already. Press the bell button so that you are notified when I do make a new video. I make a new video once a week, here on the weekends. I am passionate about restoring homemaking skills that maybe have been forgotten. I'm here in the trenches with you. If you have some ideas or things that you would like to see here on the channel, make sure you put those down in the comments below. I've also been making some homemade ice cream, which we are enjoying here on the porch. If you're interested in some ice cream recipes, make sure you tell me that you're interested down in the comments below. We're enjoying some Rocky Road ice cream. This is my plan until this baby comes couple weeks into July, I plan on having homemade ice cream here on the porch each evening. <laughs> Make sure to check on the community tab here on my YouTube channel as well. I'll try to keep you guys updated on all the good baby stuff and I'll catch you next time. Love you lots.